though. He's got, um, instead of the fourth birthing pod, though, he's got two green sun zeniths. And then he also, to spice it up, has two bonfire of the dams. It's kind of interesting, in these matches, the number of miracles people have is often how sweet of draw phases we can possibly hope for, you know, <laughs> like when things get tough. Right. I don't know, I mean, if you put too many sweet miracles in your deck, it's just every draw phase gets to be so exciting. Okay, what do we have? Christopher Weidinger. Obviously, we don't know what it is that he has uh, sideboarded in from game two. What's this? Four cards for Christopher. Wow, triple mulligan thus far. I mean, as they say, that is the game of magic. The best draw that Christopher can probably hope for this um, situation, which is not a good one, is a turn one mana accelerator into a turn two birthing pod. And then, if he really, really has a Christmas miracle happen, follow it up with either Strangle Root Geist or other fun things like that. And it looks like he's keeping at four. And Michael Jacob starts us off with a Glacial Fortress. No acceleration from Christopher. And Michael now has uh, blue-black. Blade Splicer from Michael Jacob. Christoph Christopher Weidinger checking the top before he goes and puts the card in his hand. We see a uh, ancient grudge killing the golem. SCG Open competitors, that is time in the round. And we see the second casting of the Ancient Grudge to take out the second golem as another Blade Splicer shows up. And Christopher Weidinger looking to do something here while Michael Jacob uh, with just two 1-1s. One Metamorph on Blade Splicer. Obviously, they're under serious time constraints now. I mean, how much time do they even have? Like, they just called round. They called time for the normal round. Five they more minutes. They have a five-minute extension as a result of uh, being over in a feature match. But MJ has a huge advantage uh, on cards, like on uh, resources to work with. But he's got to win in a hurry. Well, his deck is fully capable of that. Another Blade Splicer. I mean, with Blade Splicers and Restoration Angels, you can ma uh, manufacture an army very, very caref uh, quickly. That Ancient Grudge was just so good for buying Christopher some time. You know, he needs to have high value plays like that if he's going to try to hope to win from uh, four mana, or from four cards. Birthing Pod, this is huge. If he stacks that. Okay. So a gut shot in response makes sure that he can't get out of hand immediately. Still, this is a real big turn. This is a real big turn. Wow. Christopher is, this is a in remarkable pretty play. solid shape. This is a triple mulligan from Christopher. We see a thought scar from Michael Jacobs. Some random Never give stuff up. goes away. Never give up. So what do we need to see? I mean, is MJ just going to swing with the team? Oh, yeah. Are we going to see a Restoration Angel on whichever Blade Splicer that uh, Christopher blocks? I, I, think that, I think that he just swings with the team even if he has no Angel. But he has one. This is... Uh, and now Christopher needs, I believe, a bonfire. Bonfire would be fantastic. To, uh, to make this game seem actually, that's not true, 100. percent He uh, if he draws a reasonably sized I mean, creature, he can run pod. If he goes Stinger Fling Spider, and then sack it to get Inferno Titan. Oh my God! I mean, that's a pretty big game. That is, 
That's actually incredibly sick, is uh, how I would characterize that. Incredibly sick? Yes. Absolutely. Wow. And MJ. we see the... Uh, Definitely going to shuffle this bad boy. <laughs> we see the ghostly... Uh, no, M MJ's a veteran. He's not going to be... It's not going to be shaken by uh, just how much of a fight Christopher's putting up despite the multi four. Birthing pod sitting out there. Although I'll tell you, you know who loses to people who mold a four? Bozos, that's who. <laughs> Take it from one who knows. So we've got Christopher debating his options. It looks like he's got acidic slime, but unfortunately he did not draw a land. Acidic slime would have been real nice to be able to destroy a golem and then sack it to his pod to get an Inferno Titan. You know. But he's going to make do with what he has. You know, a lot of cards here that he, he could play that are going to have a substantial effect on the board. Uh, he's got one other option in his hand. Didn't see what it is. It looks like this is going to be the acidic slime, though. Or is it going to be Stinger Fling? Does he have an extra card in his? Oh, it is acidic slime. slime. And... That slime is a, represents a surprising amount of damage reduction because those blade splicers also get eaten by it. Yep, it's going to eat a, it's going to eat them, and um, it's threatening next turn to turn into an Inferno Titan. MJ wisely just saying, "Here's it all." Wow. Okay, I think you're going to have to um, block a block a golem and block a blade splicer. Yeah, there we go. No, he blocks two blade splicers. A little greedy, if you ask me. Uh, I don't know. Takes uh, seven. See? Wow. Well, it wouldn't have mattered, I suppose, but it's just, it seems like you gotta just prevent some damage because you gotta, you wanna be in the position of next turn being, have Inferno Titan able to actually win. Now I don't think it does, right? Yeah, now he's at five and facing lethal. Two angels will still stop him because of, uh, it's not enough. Yep. Inferno Titan, no, Inferno Titan doesn't do it. He really needed to block the uh, the other way. It was a little too greedy. That now, it depends on what cost life. he has. Now, the reason, just in case you're not sure why that matters as much, is that extra two damage is the big reason. Yep. With Chris at five instead of seven, the two angels, uh, I mean, it's tough when you're behind so much, like trying to play, imagining everything you should play around, but in this case, having another, playing around another angel would have... Uh, would have helped substantially. I think Michael Jacob has a Day of Judgment in his hand. He does. It's a totally reasonable matchup for the Day of oh, Judgment. Oh, absolutely. And the slime is going to turn into an Inferno Titan. Well, I don't know. He needs to have something else or he's just dead to the board that way. He might have a Bird of Paradise in his hand. There's Thalia. Okay. What other sixes does he possibly have? No, but he has Fiend Hunter to go get... Ah, there we go. Fiend Hunter. So he can sack Talia to get a Fiend Hunter, and he can sack, he can use the Fiend Hunter to keep one of the angels under control. And at least then he doesn't die to the board. It's the only way I see right now for him to not be just dead immediately, but... I mean, it does mean that he's stuck in a really untenable position, though. Extremely. It's going to be a bad turn for him next turn. But it, it's... I mean, at least this way he lives one more. And you can always draw Bonfire. That's fair here. That's fair. The miracle yep. can happen. I need a miracle. So, uh, just in time to not see how the game ends. Ah, okay. <laughs> I believe we have a, conf uh, a concession. And the game is over. <laughs>